Okay, so we're continuing in our prep for uh, quadrilaterals unit test. Here we have a question that says, in some quadrilaterals, the diagonals bisect the vertex angles. For which quadrilaterals is this true? So I, I like to start with really extreme examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of draw, let's see if I can, sorry. Um, let's make that a really long, I'm going to make a really long rectangle here. So I'm going to make a perpendicular, perpend, ah, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Ah! Okay, here we go. Start again. Let's make a perpendicular line here and a perpendicular line there. And um, let's place a point on the object over here. It's going to get, what am I doing? That was not what I wanted. Let's try that again. A point on the perpendicular. And then I can make another perpendicular that goes through there. And then I can find my intersection point right here where these two things meet. Okay, and now I can draw my rectangle. So this is a little rectangle machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, a rectangle that looks a lot like a square. We're going to draw the diagonals. Okay, here comes the diagonals here. And when the rectangle looks a lot like the square, it's hard to tell if maybe those, well, let's see, let's go like this. It's hard to tell at first if maybe those diagonals aren't bisecting the corners, right? Those angles look very congruent to each other, right? But as we make it a more extreme, okay, there we see it. Let's make it more extreme like this, and you can start to see pretty easily that now these two angles do not look bisected. So what what we can you know kind of conclude from that is that if rectangles are not if the diagonals of rectangles are not bisecting the, each other's angles, then clearly that's not going to be true for all parallelograms. The only thing it could be true for would be our rhombi and our squares, right? Um, but not the other parallelograms. But what about the others? Trapezoids? No. Um, you remember that trapezoids have really funny shapes, and um, so it's not a guarantee that you're going to be doing that. And then you have, let's draw a kite real quick. Kite would have um, congruent sides like this, and then another pair of congruent sides that looks like this. And the um, diagonals are perpendicular, but um, these angles, this diagonal is going to bisect this angle here and this angle there. But this diagonal here does not bisect. This is a very thin, acute angle, and this can be um, a very large angle. It's not going to be a right angle, but it's going to be a much larger acute angle. So kite's not going to happen. Um, okay, here it says, construct kite, STUV with diagonals SU and TV intersecting at point W. All right, so... Let's go back over here. I'm gonna, I don't have my calculator to construct the kite with, but that's how I would have you do this is on your, oh, let me hit erase here. Sorry. Ah, do this. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's start again. Here we go. A new, and I'm not going to save that. So if I had to construct the kite, the trick to the kite is that we should have congruent, um, we should have congruent, consecutive congruent sides. So if I start with the center, and I make a circle, right? And I place a couple of points on that circle. Okay, so um, a point on the object. So let me, I've got B on there, but B maybe will move. Okay, now I have a, oh wait, I don't want to make those yet. So sorry. Ah, and now I've got another circle. I want this other circle to be a different sized circle. Okay. So there we go, and then what we're going to do is we're going to find those, where those points intersect, okay, where those circles intersect, okay. So now if I construct a polygon from the center here to intersection point, to the center there, to the intersection point, and back. So what you can see is you'd use a compass, and you'd make an arc and another arc, and intersect them, just make sure they're not the same size. Then you'd have these two sides, because they are radii, they're going to be the same size, and these two sides, because they're radii of circle A, they are going to be congruent as well. So circle C, these two radii are congruent. Circle A, these two radii are congruent. So the quadrilateral is a kite. Now they wanted us to make diagonals, right? And um, I'm going to go ahead and 
get segments going here for these diagonals. And this is a little um, machine, right, that we can use. I'm going to move that point D kind of out of the way and move this point B kind of out of the way up there. But we have, we have basically a kite machine here, okay? Let's see what they wanted us to do. What additional, oh, they just wanted us to construct it. That's it. Okay, what additional properties do an isosceles trapezoid have that all other trapezoids do not have? Okay, so um, so if there are isosceles trapezoids, then the legs are congruent, okay? But also the diagonals are congruent. So let's make one of those. That is a unique iso uh, trapezoid is when they're isosceles. Uh, okay, I didn't mean to save that. Here we go. Let's make a segment. We're going to make a segment here. And I'm going to construct a perpendicular or a parallel line. Parallel to there goes through here, let's just say. And then I'm going to place a couple of points. Or I'm going to draw a circle. Okay. Let me do that. I'm going to draw circles with a fixed radius here. Actually, I'll just draw a circle like this. Okay. And then a circle. Oops, sorry, I hit escape. And oh boy, okay. Click there again. And undo there. Okay, here we go. A circle here, right? Um, that's not what I want to do. Sorry, I got a I got a better idea. Sorry about that. Let's do this this way. Hit escape. Let me undo that last circle. Let me find the midpoint here, and I'll draw a circle from the midpoint. So I find the midpoint of this segment. Come on. Ah. Let's try that again. I'm trying to select that. Okay, there's the segment. And now I'm going to draw a circle from that segment. It's going to go through this, this parallel line, right? So then these intersection points, the points where it intersect, they're going to be... Um, equidistant they're going to be equidistant from the center point which makes them e equidistant from the end points so now I can make my isosceles trapezoid and this is a isosceles trapezoid machine because <clears throat> if I adjust the size of this circle right or adjust the size of that original segment or anything, I get a bunch of different isosceles trapezoids. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to look at the diagonals. Let's look at these diagonals. So here we go, this diagonal here to there and this diagonal here to there. And what do we know about these diagonals? Well, you can see they're not right angles. But are they bisecting each other? Aha! So let's get the intersection point here where those two diagonals intersect. And let's see, do they bisect each other? Well, interestingly, um, or, or, and are they congruent? Sorry, that's another good question. You can see over here, uh, get my selection tool. Sorry, there's that one. That is 7.89, and this diagonal over here is 7.89 as well. They're both, that's FB is 7.89, and GA is 7.89. So we can see that. So now the segment FH, if I make that segment, well, you can see, and I, I can make it big enough so you can really see here, um, but this distance is shorter than that distance. So let's, let's stretch that out and just make sure you can really see that. So the distance between um, F and H, sorry, the distance between F and H here is much shorter between F and H than it is from H to B. So they're not bisecting each other, they're not bisecting the angles, they're just congruent. The two lengths, the two diagonals are congruent. All right, so those are a couple of uh, additional properties. The legs are congruent and the diagonals are congruent. So when is a biconditional statement true? Okay, well, the biconditional statement is true. It's what we call the if and only if 
statement. It's true as a definition, right? So it's true if and only if a conditional statement and its converse both are true, okay? So if the um, conditional statement and its converse are both true, then it's a biconditional statement that is true, okay? And it's written often if and only if. Write the converse of the following conditional statement and write the biconditional. So here we go. If an angle measures 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. So the converse would be if it is a straight angle, then the angle measures 180 degrees. And now the biconditional will go like this. An angle measures 180 degrees if and only if it is a straight angle. Okay, let's try that again. An angle measures 180 degrees if and only if it is a straight angle. Okay. All right, solve for the perimeter of the kite. Show your work. Okay, well, this is, I'm, you know, I'm actually not even going to do this. This, what we know about these kites, the diagonals of the kites intercept at right angles. So, therefore, these are all right triangles. So, the length here would be the square root of 45 squared plus 24 squared. So, you have 2 times the square root of 45 squared plus 24 squared plus 2 times the square root of 10 squared plus 24 squared. That would be the hypo uh, hypotenuse here, these, these right triangles. So, 2 plus the square root of 24 squared plus 45 squared plus 2 times the square root of 10 squared plus 24 squared. You can put that in your calculator and you can get the perimeter of the kite. And that's how you do it. All right, let's look at the next test, or the end of chapter test here. Sketch the perpendicular parallel line theorem and draw a, ske uh, draw a sketch to illustrate the theorem. Okay, perpendicular parallel line. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, I had a little problem. But anyway, the perpendicular parallel line theorem, the way we're using this theorem in this class is to say, and it says draw a line to sketch the theorem. So here we go. If you have a line and it has a perpendicular, right? So there's a perpendicular line to this line. And then there were another perpendicular to this line. So these two lines are both perpendicular to the same line. So the perpendicular parallel line theorem tells us that these two lines have to be parallel. They're both perpendicular to the same line, so therefore they have to be parallel. Okay? So if... Uh, let's see, the theorem says if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then those two lines are parallel. Okay. Create a two-column proof. Um, kite MNOP with diagonal MO. Uh, prove that angle NMO is congruent to angle PMO. Okay, this is a really easy one, so I will try my very best to write it out. Okay, so we have MNO, right? You gotta imagine that that's well drawn because I know it's not. There's M, there's N, there's O. Then we have triangle M O P. We have M O P. Given that it's a kite, what do we know? Well, because it's a kite, this side and this side are congruent, and this side and this side are congruent and by the reflexive this side is congruent to itself so therefore we know these two triangles are congruent by side 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 and that means all the corresponding parts are congruent by CPCTC so they want us to prove that angle NMO is congruent to angle PMO so once we've proven by side 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 that these two triangles are congruent then NMO is congruent to PMO by CPCTC. Okay? Um, I didn't do it as a two column, but I think you probably could pretty easily there. Okay. In some quadrilaterals, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. For which quadrilaterals is this true? Okay. So that turns out to be true if they're perpendicular to each other for a couple different ones. So first, let's make, um, let's see, we're going to construct oh, a rhombus. 
When I'm going to do the rhombus, I'm going to do this, make a circle from here to there, and a circle from there to here, okay? And then that way, and find my intersection points, and that way I know that from A to D and A to C, those two are congruent because they're both radii of circle A, and B, D, and B, C are congruent because they're both radii of angle B, and they're also congruent to the distance to BA because these circles are, that segment is radii of both circles. So since AB is congruent to AC, AD, BC, and BD, then they all have to be congruent to each other. So this is one way, very simple way to form a, to form a, um, A rhombus, okay, so, sorry, again, back here it says um, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, so we're going to go ahead and prove that to be true. And I think what I'll do to prove that is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the slopes, talk about doing these slopes and making sure you see that the slopes are um, past that test, right? So the test should be to calculate one time one slope times the other slope and it should equal negative one right so let's see let's measure the slope of this line right there and that line right there and i get 5.4 something let me see if i can make that a little bit clearer yeah slope is 5.47 and this is negative 0 0.18 now those are rounded right those are rounded um but I think I can put in a, let's see, can I put in a calculation button here? Um, no, I don't, I think, oh, I can maybe add, let me try adding in a spreadsheet here. So let me add in the spreadsheet. And now if I put this is equal to that slope right there. No, that didn't work. Sorry, I, I clicked one. I didn't mean to click one. Let me try that again. If this, let's try this again. If this cell is equal to that slope, no. Oh, I think I know what I can do. I can record to spreadsheet. There you go. Record to spreadsheet. Okay. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll record to spreadsheet. So there's M1. Let me get rid of, let me get rid of this delete column A, delete column A, and I don't know if that did or didn't, I don't know. Um, okay, so it, yeah, it did. It, so now we have M and M1, that's what these are called. Okay, gotcha. So now what happens if I use my, um, my machine here, then, and I come over here and I say, okay, this is equal to the, oops, equals what, uh, B, at a2 times b2, right? So right now I don't have anything there, but as soon as I start to move this, you can see that it is, the slopes are changing, and it's recording every slope that I've got there in this little spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, now this is, let's try that again, equals a2 times b2. Okay, that's negative one when we multiply those numbers together. And then what I can do, this is, ah, got to get rid of this bar. There we go. Okay, that's one of my toolbars down there. But as I scroll this down, okay, and I scroll all the way down here, you can see that in every case the slope's equal to negative one. Okay, I think there was one where maybe we got, undefined and zero so that must have been a vertical line um, a vertical line is undefined and a horizontal line is zero so that didn't calculate out but every other slope is perpendicular so there's some evidence from looking at it that, that it's going to be true for all rhombus rhombi and if it's true for rhombi that they are perpendicular the diagonals are perpendicular then it also has to be true for square right um, it's not true for rectangles and the other one that it's true for is our kites. Let's make a kite again. We'll do the same thing here. So let me go back to my, uh, change my perspectives, go back to 
the graphing perspective and uh, let me just start a new one here we go real quick so file new and no I don't need to save that and to make a kite was really simple if you remember we just made a circle and then we made another circle oops okay my computer slowed down I don't even know if it's actually recording let's try to undo that real quick and here we go so I'm gonna run that through there and then um, create my polygons here we go oh find my intersection points first sorry where these two circles intersect right create my polygon this polygon is a kite okay and then we just need to start adjusting that kite Okay, we can adjust it. And um, so we get all kinds of forms of kites. And then we make our segments. So C to A and E to D. Okay. And then now that we have that, we measure our slopes. So here we go again. Me oops. Measure the slope of this segment and that segment. And I'll go the faster now because I just did this, so I remember how to do it. Here it is, the spreadsheet. Okay, and I click here on this slope here. Click on that slope. Uh, right mouse click and record the spreadsheet. And right mouse click and record that one to spreadsheet. And now, um, as I go about adjusting this I'm getting all those slopes recorded for all these different all these different kites and if I then say okay well what's the product of those two slopes it's equal to let's see C2 times D2 so here I am taking cell C2 multiplying it by cells D2 right column D row 2 that's what this means I'm saying, what happens if I multiply those two numbers together and I get negative 1? And then I drag that all the way down. And for all of these many, 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 many examples, well, I've got 72 examples there. You can see that they're all coming up the same way, perpendicular. So, and that's just going to be the way it is. So, we see that is true for kites. So, for kites, rhombi, square, those are all true could also be true for other quadrilaterals right um, but we just the ones that we've classified those are the ones that we know of but you know really building a, um, a quadrilateral just means any four points so if I build a quadrilateral another way watch this if I um, uh, start another one real quick new I'm not gonna save that and I'm gonna go to my perspectives and change it so I can see the graphing Okay, so what I'm going to do here, and close that out real quick, I'm just going to construct a segment, boom, and then I'm going to put a perpendicular line through that segment. I don't care where, let's say right there, okay. And now I'm going to place some points on that perpendicular line, so points on the object, so I'll put one over here and one down there, just randomly. And now if I make that into a polygon, like this, is this polygon a quadrilateral? Yes. Do you see the diagonals? Yes. The diagonals are perpendicular? Yes. I forced them to be perpendicular. But what kind is it? Is it a kite? Is this distance automatically the same as that distance or that distance? No. We don't have any congruent lengths. Um, it's not parallel sides. You know, we really don't have anything here to speak of that's any kind of special um, you know it's not any kind of special um, quadrilateral it's just it's just a quadrilateral is all it is so I would say that you know it can be for just general you can make regular quadrilaterals and they can always have that too but the only ones that we've really studied then are the rhombi and the rectangle that have for sure have diagonals that are perpendicular Okay, 
When I say rectangles, we mean, of course, uh, rhombi. It's not rectangles. If I said rectangles, I'm sorry. Quadrilaterals, where the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, are rhombi squares, which is a part of the rhombi, right? A classification of rhombi. And then, or a subset of the rhombi is the best way to say it. And then kites. Those are the ones where the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Um, and then, of course, there are many other quadrilaterals we can create uh, by using perpendicular lines that would result in the diagonals being perpendicular. Draw a Venn diagram, describe the relationship between all of the quadrilaterals, show the relationship between the par parallelograms. Now, I, I'm not going to draw that. I can't draw it very well. I know we've done this in class many times, but I think one of the key things is that inside the world of parallelograms, you have rhombi and you have rectangles, and they overlap, and the part where they overlap is where the squares are. They're all parallelograms, right? And there are other kinds of parallelograms as well. Then you have the kites and you have the trapezoids that we've studied. And then, of course, you have just all other ones, uh, quadrilaterals as well. But I'm not going to draw that out. We've done it more than once in class. Okay, Chelsea drew a 16-sided polygon. So calculate the sum of the interior angles of the figure. Okay, so I'm going to use our formula, right, which is sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 in parentheses. Okay, so n minus 2 times 180. So if it's 16 sides, it would be 16 minus 2 is 14. 14 times 180, and I'm not going to do that in my head, um, but you can figure that out. Suppose the figure is a regular polygon. Use the formula to calculate each interior angle measure. So then we would use n minus 2, which would be 16 minus 2, which is 14, times 180, and then that gives us the sum of all the interior angles, but then we divide that by n because it's a regular polygon and we're looking for the calculation of each interior angle. So we just divide it up for each one. And what is the sum of the exterior angles of the figure? Well, all polygons have the same measure for their exterior angles, which is 360 degrees. I went through proof on that. If the figure is a regular polygon, what is the measure of each? Exterior angle, well, that'd be 360 degrees, right, divided by n. Okay, so you got to have those those little facts memorized, okay, for your test. Sorry, ah, here we go. Stupid notifications. Okay, um, each measure of an interior angle of a polygon is 140. Determine, um, and that's a regular polygon. Determine the number of sides. So we're going to use the formula here that we just went through. The formula was n minus 2 in parentheses, right, times 140. I'm sorry, not 140, times 180. That is the sum for the interior angles of any polygon. Divided by n, that gives me the measure of each, the each, interior angle, the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon can be calculated this way. And the answers to this formula is 140. Okay, And so I could just now solve for n. How would I do that? Well, I would multiply both sides by n, I get 140n. Over here I distribute the 180, I get 180n minus 360. And then I have to uh, you do a little math manipulation, some algebra, minus 140n from both sides. You get 40n minus 360 equals 0. Divide by, or add 360 to both sides. You get 40n equals 360. Divide by 40, n equals 9. Should be the number of sides is 9. Um, that's me doing it in my head. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. The measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon is 24 degrees. Determine the number of sides of the polygon. Show your work. Okay, so... If it's a regular polygon, we're using for the exterior angles 360, right, over n equals 24. So multiply both sides by n and divide by 24, and I think you're going to get 15, um, n equals 15, but you can solve that basic algebra there. Determine the measure of an exterior angle of a regular octagon. Okay, so if it's a regular octagon, I take the 360 for my exterior angles. That's the sum of the exterior angles. 
divide it by 8 because an octagon has 8 sides and whatever that turns into what is that going to be 45 I think 45 so each exterior angle would measure 45 degrees if I've done that correctly all right and um, let's see how much more we can do here determine whether each statement is true or false if it's false explain why it says if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a square. No, that's false. Could be a rectangle. Okay. Um, and it could even be a isosceles trapezoid. So um, just the fact that they're diagonals does not absolutely mean it's a square. If both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That is true. That is the definition of a parallelogram. So we would say both pairs of opposite sides are parallelogram are parallel if and only if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Could also be read the quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if both pairs of sides opposite sides are parallel. Because that is a definition. Okay. All right, here we have it says use the coordinate plane to answer parts A through C. Okay. This one um Okay, this one's going to take a little bit of work, and we're going to do it definitely in GeoGebra. Uh, you're going to have to do it in your calculator, which we practice, but because I don't have that software on here, I'm going to do it in GeoGebra. So here we go. I've got a new, um, a new file started here. I'm going to plot these points. I have 0, 0, 2, 2, and 7, negative 3. So let's put those three in, right? And we have... Zero, zero, two, two, and seven, negative three. Okay, so there I have um, three of these sides here. And now it says, analyze them, determine the location of D so the figure is a rectangle. Okay, so this is, this is pretty simple, actually. I need to make a rectangle. So what I need to do is make some segments here. There's one side. Rectangles have right angles. So I can start by, I'm pretty sure this one's going to have to be a right angle, right? So that means I just need to construct a perpendicular line here. Goes through C. Here we go. Oh, uh, escape. Let's try that again. Here it goes through A. Sorry, perpendicular line. Perpendicular to segment F and goes through A. Find the points where they intersect. And there's D. 5, negative 5 would be the answer. Now, I know what they're wanting you to do. I mean, what they're wanting you to do and what's really good is what we've talked about before, being able to do these by hand. So there's a couple different ways to do these by hand. One of the ways I really like to do it is to, you know, recreate in the graph the triangles that make up, you know, our slope triangle here. So if I'm going, you know, from B, I have to go down and over. When I go down to, over to. Then from C, I'm going to have to go down to and over to. And that would have brought me a line that was parallel and congruent to AB. And, and this is really important. A line that is parallel and congruent to AB will force this to be a parallel or a yeah a parallelogram um, which means these angles here would have to be since both so that's that's one proof we already did which was to say if one pair of opposite sides are both parallel and congruent then the object has to be a parallelogram so we know it's a parallelogram the next thing that we know is these this had to be a right angle so if this side is parallel, then this also has to be a right angle for these two to be parallel to each other. Well, guess what? Then now we've got a parallel line. This transversal right here, these sides are right angles. Guess what we're going to have to have here? They're going to have to be right angles, okay? And how are we going to know that they're going to have to be right angles? Well, we could go through making a diagonal here and showing this side and this side and that side is congruent to putting a diagonal here. Um, uh, well, there's a bunch of different ways we can prove it, but we're not going to prove that. This video is getting long. Okay, so now how does knowing, knowing that ABCD is a rectangle help you determine point D? 
Well, because I know that I want a line that's going to be perpendicular here. I know I want it to be parallel to that side. Um, that's helpful. And then uh, show how you determine point D on the coordinate plane. Well, that's how I did it. I mean, if I was, I did it by just constructing perpendiculars. Perpendiculars will meet at only one point. That is also these two lines are going to have to be perpendicular to each other. Um, but you could do it by constructing these congruent triangles here. And then that would that would force this line to be parallel. We could also make another congruent triangle, which is down here, three over there, seven, right? And then come over here uh, from, let's see, it's from point A down three and over seven to get there. Is that right? No, sorry. B would be down five over five. So then we'd come down here and go down five over five. Yeah, that's the two triangles we could do. And then we would have these two both being congruent and parallel. Anyway, 5, negative 5 is my answer, and that's how we did it. Okay, I hope you're ready for the test.